Hi, Dermot McCann, bringing you another story from McCann Shorts. This story is called Kissing Baryshnikov. It starts back in the early 80s when I lived in LA. And it was my Sunday afternoon routine to go down to Venice Beach every Sunday and, and watch the chainsaw juggler, the black dude that, uh, the Caribbean black dude that walked on broken glass and didn't cut himself. Uh, the kids that used to bring down a 10 by 10 foot square of linoleum, sprinkle it with water and do their break dancing on it. Countless comics that would withstand all kinds of hecklers as they tried to hone their shtick hoping to be, you know, discovered at some point. Uh, one of my favorite uh, guys down in Venice Beach, and it, he wasn't actually a comic, but was an old black dude who used to just walk up to people and say, support your local wino, give me your money. <laughs> and people would, they would just hand money over to this guy. Anyhow, I, I, I had done that countless times, put my roller skates on and went down to, to Venice Beach. I'm sitting one Sunday morning on uh, Santa Monica Pier reading the LA Times and I spot an ad for uh, Mikhail Baryshnikov dancing Twyla Tharp's choreographed Sinatra Suites. And I'm thinking, wow, that would be a nice break. I only need one ticket, even though it's happening this afternoon, I can probably get it. So off I go, I get the ticket. The performance is amazing. Um, fast forward, I don't know, maybe 10 years later. Um, it would have been now the uh, 91, I think. And it is morning break. I'm sitting on my job site uh, in uh, Guelph, Ontario. And I'm reading the Globe and Mail, and I see almost the identical ad. It's Barishnikov coming to do the same production at the O'Keefe Center. I immediately get on the phone, leave a voicemail for my girlfriend uh, for her to call the box office as soon as it opens and get tickets for us. So I walk in the door that night. Wendy is on the phone, and she says, to the person on the other end of the phone. I, actually, he's just come in. Hang on a second. She puts her hand over the phone and she says, the tickets are $250 each. I go, hi. <laughs> it turns out the, um, the production is actually a fundraiser for Women's College Hospital. So this is mid-November. Wendy and I don't have... Christmas gifts for each other, we decide to buy the tickets uh, for each other. And I, I, I'm just telling Wendy, this is an absolute must-see. To see Baryshnikov do something other than ballet that is set to pretty sweet music is, is you have to go. A month later, we're actually getting ready. And as girlfriends often do, Wendy says, what are you wearing? And I'm thinking, well, at 250 bucks a ticket, I think we should get dressed up. So I put on my suit, Wendy gets all dolled up, off we go. The performance is absolutely amazing. Uh, as soon as the performance is over, uh, you know, there's standing ovations following, all of that kind of stuff. We sit back down, we have great seats, we're in like row M right in the center of the theater. So I said to Wendy, let the crowd disperse, we'll, you know, avoid the traffic jams outside. We'll, it, you know, just let them all go first and we'll go like in 10 or 15 minutes and, and it'll be a lot smoother. As we're sitting there, I spot a line of about a dozen very well-dressed people walking down the right aisle towards the stage door. And the light goes on. I nudge Wendy and I said, don't even blink, follow me and let's, cut right in behind those people. I think something's going on. So we do, we uh, slide right in behind these people. We walk down a long hallway and end up in the backstage uh, reception room with um, servers in tuxedos walking around with uh, trays of champagne and smoked salmon and hors d'oeuvres and this, that and the other. I said to Wendy, boy, I know what's gonna happen here. Bershnikov's gonna end up coming into the room. So we're standing off to the side, trying to be discreet, sipping our champagne. 
On the other side of the room, I spot Brian Linehan. Now, for those who don't know who Brian Linehan is, he had a talk show back, um, you know, in the 80s, I think, uh, in Toronto. And he uh, interviewed mostly celebrities. Um, he was renowned for his remarkable memory. He could pull up facts that would just astound people. Anyhow, I look across the room and I can see that he's kind of staring towards us. At that point, Wendy turns to me and she says, Dermot, Brian Linehan is staring at me and I think he's coming over here. So I say, well, you know, <laughs> don't worry about it. We'll, we'll handle it. So Brian comes over. He introduces himself to us and turns to Wendy and says, don't I know you? And Wendy goes, I don't think you do, Mr. Linehan. Uh, my name's Wendy. A lot of people have told me that I look a little bit like Justine Bateman. Maybe you're mistaking me for her. And he goes, oh, yes, yeah, you're, you're probably right. You're probably right. Off he goes back into the room and, and works, works the room. Um, Wendy and I are standing talking to a doctor and his wife. Um, he's obviously trying to figure out where I fit into the whole women's college hospital thing. But... Uh, you know, I, I don't tell any lies, I just say, yeah, I'm a carpenter from Guelph and boop. About 10 minutes later, the buzz in the room drops, and sure enough, on the other side of the room, in walks Mikhail Baryshnikov, Twyla Tharp, and a woman who seems to know everybody in the room. She's introducing uh, the pair to people as she moves through the room. Now, as luck would have it, I'm kind of the first one that they encounter in our little foursome. And uh, she walks up to me and she says, and this is, and I introduce myself, Dermot McCann. I, you know, shake Bershnikov's hand and Twyla Tharp's hand. Uh, I tell them how much of a fan I am of, of their work. Uh, I explain that I had seen this same production in Los Angeles some years ago, and that's why I brought Wendy tonight. Wendy, uh, by the way, it, it, as Baryshnikov is approaching us, I can see that all of the uh, people in the room are, you know, they, they barely have the nerve to shake his hand. And I, I said to Wispy, uh, to Wispy, I said to Wendy, whenever he comes over here, kiss him on both cheeks. Uh, I believe uh, Baryshnikov, I think it's from Latvia, but it, he's, he's Eastern European, he will think nothing of it. So when he comes here, none of the other women have the nerve to do it do it. So whenever Wendy, um, she first of all shakes Twyla Tharp's hand and then she steps right up to Baryshnikov and kisses him on each cheek, <laughs> which is great. Uh, like I said, he, he didn't think twice about it. So before the woman that is introducing them to everyone can uh, follow up with the next introduction to the doctor that I've been standing talking to, Baryshnikov looks at this doctor and his face lights up. And the doctor, he's quite a tall man. Uh, Baryshnikov's not that tall. Uh, he's quite a tall man. He's standing there and he looks at, at Baryshnikov and he says, Misha. And the two of them engage in a very, very wonderful embrace. And as the doctor steps back, he says to Baryshnikov, have you got your fly down yet? And Baryshnikov, kind of, you know, embarrassed, kind of says, uh, no, I, I wish I could remember the doctor's name. I can't for the life of me remember who he, what his name was. Anyhow, Baryshnikov says, no, Dr. So-and-so, um, I have not had much opportunity to fish since coming to North America. I have been very busy with American Ballet Theater, uh, getting my life organized and blah, blah, blah. So uh, the doctor says, well, your English certainly is a whole lot better than the last time we spoke. And he says, well, this would not be a very difficult improvement because uh, back then I spoke almost no English. I must thank you and, and your friends for, for the wonderful time that you gave me back then when uh, so many years ago. So it turns out that Baryshnikov, when he first defected from the USSR, actually defected right after a performance at the O'Keefe Center. 
he was kind of zipped out the side door. Uh, the, the, the performance at the O'Keefe Center was the very last performance of uh, a tour that the Bolshoi was doing. I'm pretty sure it was the Bolshoi he was with at the time, Bolshoi Ballet. They whipped him out the side door, stuffed him into a car, zipped him out to the airport, uh, Pearson International flew him to Gander where this doctor and a bunch of his buddies were sitting waiting in a float plane and Bershnikov jumped in with them and off they went to some remote fishing resort in Newfoundland for a couple of weeks till the heat died down on Bershnikov. So uh, these two knew each other from way back. So off Bershnikov goes to work the rest of the room. I, I turned to the doctor and I said to him, boy, you better hope you don't get uh, quoted out of context asking Bershnikov if he's got his fly down yet. <laughs> so he laughed. He thought it was pretty funny. I, he, he, I, I wish I could remember his name. He, he was an absolutely wonderful man. Uh, he was gracious enough to invite Wendy and I to join him and his wife upstairs in the upper mezzanine of the, the front foyer of the O'Keefe Center. There was this unbelievable uh, eight course dinner, uh, candlelit uh, white linen tablecloths and everything. And um, we ended up uh, having dinner with the doctor and his wife. Hey, Brian Linehan even came to our table and joined us. So there's my kissing Baryshnikov story. I tell you, I, I've never been so glad. Uh, I mean, normally when I put on my suit, uh, I'm either going to court or a wedding or a funeral. Um, I was so glad that I put it on that night. I, it, it was just such a wonderful evening. So there you go. There's my story of kissing Baryshnikov. I'd love to hear any comments that you have about any of these stories. You can contact me at mccannshorts at gmail.com. And don't forget, no comma in the email address. One word all the way through. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye-bye. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>